hearts. We come here and we just want to praise you, Lord. We want to glorify you, Jesus. We want to magnify the name of the Lord. Holy are you, Jesus. You are mighty. You are worthy. Hallelujah. We give you glory, Lord. We speak and decree that your Holy Spirit rules in our life, that we yield to the Holy Spirit. We thank you and praise you, Father, for giving us the Holy Spirit. We thank you for sending Jesus to die for us. We thank you that Jesus purchased our healing, that Jesus purchased our deliverance, and we praise you and we thank you, Adonai, Adonisi. We thank you, bright morning star, lion of the tribe of Judah, worthy is the lamb. Father God, you are so holy. And Jesus, we worship you. We exalt you. We lift your name on high. We just come here to love you and to adore you at the beginning of this service. And we bless your name, Lord. We bless you. We give you praise. We give you adoration because you are worthy. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for what you're releasing in this hour. We thank you for what you want to continue to release. I thank you. I just pray over every Facebook and YouTube friend right now in the name of Jesus. And I speak and I decree that you will bless them in their coming, that you will bless them in their going. I speak and decree that they are the head and not the tail, that they are above and not beneath, that no weapon formed against them will prosper. I command every sickness and plague that is coming near your dwelling to be aborted of that mission, of that assignment. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bind and I rebuke every spirit of rejection in your life. In Jesus Christ's name, I pull out and destroy every seed of fear that has come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release the peace and the love, the shalom of God into your life, the peace that surpasses all understanding. I thank you and praise you, Father, for the newness that's going to come upon my friends like a fresh morning rain. I thank you that they wear the helmet of salvation, the helmet of deliverance. I thank you, Father, that you quench every fiery dart of the enemy on their behalf, that you quench every fiery dart of the enemy. And God, right now, I just put up a wall of fire around my Facebook friends, around my YouTube friends. I put up a wall of fire that the enemy cannot penetrate it in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and I declare that you are their fortress, that you are their strong tower, that you are their deliverer, that no weapon is going to get through their armor. And Father God, right now, we just armor up. We put on our armor tight and strong and, and we buckle that belt and we put up that shield and we thank you and praise you that you've given us the armor so that we can walk in victory, so that we can walk in abundance, so that we can walk in our authority. I thank you that my friends have their kingdom inheritance. God, that you have given them a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And so when the world tries to shake them. I rebuke every fleshly motive in the name of Jesus, every fleshly reaction in the name of Jesus. And I decree and I declare today that my Facebook and YouTube friends are unshakable. They are unshakable. And I thank you and I praise you, Adonai, Adonisi. I thank you for who you are, who you're creating us to be. I thank you, Elroy. Oh, whoo, Jesus. Yes. I thank you. And I praise you for who you are, for who you are. You are great and you are mighty. Hallelujah. And we bless your name. We just come here together tonight to lift your name upon high, Lord, to learn the word of God, to come here as a body of Christ, to come here as a community of believers, to get filled with joy, to get filled with empowerment, to get filled with love. And so we thank you for what you want to fill us with, with what you want to establish us with. In the name of Jesus Christ, we bless you and we praise you, Father God. We praise you, Father God. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the wonderful Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Come on. If Jesus is your Lord and Savior, type up a comment right now. Be like, Jesus is my Lord and Savior. I want to know that you guys are saved. I want to know that you've accepted him as your Lord and Savior. Type in something in the comments so I know that Jesus is is your Lord and Savior, guys, that, that when I see 
you know, Jesus, someday I'm going to see you next to him because you're going to be in heaven with us just celebrating. And, and I want to know that my Facebook friends, that my YouTube friends, at my church, I want to know, guys, that like, come on, we're all going to be partying in heaven together. And so just declare it out right now. I don't think we declare it out enough. You know, Jesus is my Lord and Savior. I can't wait until we get to heaven. You know, I think about all the little um, bickering and, and fighting and the competition and the jealousy. And I think about, you know, relationships that have been lost and, you know, relationships that didn't go the way we wanted. You know, they went sour and, and friendships that left us. And I think about how, you know, we were always close to, you know, certain people and how, you know, once we were such good friends and we worshiped together and we, you know, had fun and the Lord, and now there's so much dissension and disunity and distraction. And I think, you know what, won't it be great when we get to heaven and all that little pettiness doesn't even matter anymore. And we can be back together with those relationships that we once loved and adored. Come on, somebody put like, amen. Yes, that. That will be great. You know, I, I just, I just think of that. I'm like, yeah, it'll be great when we don't have to worry about everything else. Amen. Come on. Type it in the comments. Come on. I'm waiting for you. I'm reading them. I'm reading them. Yeah. It'll be great. Just, you know, when those things don't matter anymore. Amen. I, I think that's going to be great. I remember one of my um, assistant directors, you know, she painted a picture of her and I worshiping in heaven and, you know, our relationship ended and I got rid of the picture after a while. And I'm like, man, won't it be great when we can, you know, just have that, you know, it's like, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Well, welcome. I hope you guys are ready. I'm going to dig deep into the word tonight. So, um, you know, get your pen and paper if you want to take um, some of these scriptures and write them down. You know, that's the one thing like when pastors always preach, I'm like, well, that's a good scripture. I want to write that down. I want to remember that. I want to, you know, um, just, you know, have that back in front of me again. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. When we see that the things on earth didn't matter and just be in the glory and presence of God. Yes, I love that, Khadijah. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Yesterday, our build event. Oh, my goodness. I loved it. Who was on it? Comment. Did you love it? Um. Wow. Like my daughter asked me about it and I'm like, it was so good. I cannot wait to equip people in their destinies, in their business, in their ministry. I cannot wait. And so, um, yeah, that, that was really good. Really good. Bless the name of the Lord. I'm just reading your comments a minute, guys. I'm ready. I'm hungry. Um, people on the uh, webinar said, yes, so good. It was so good. I'm pumped. Absolutely love it. Amen. Totally awesome. So good. I had a lot of fun teaching it. It was, it was great. Awesome. Well, I want to teach you tonight about renewing your mind and shifting. And I want to talk to you about how we can renew our mind with scriptures, what the scriptures say and positivity. I don't think we speak out enough positive things out of our mouth. And man, guys, you know, guess what? Releases officially Tuesday. Come on. We are going to have a party on Facebook and YouTube Tuesday. Official release date Tuesday. But guess what, guys? I have them in stock. So if you want me to ship them out tomorrow, you can order it tonight. Okay. But I'm very excited. Mind battles, root out mental triggers to release peace. Who needs to release some peace? I got my stress ball here. 
So we had these made, you know, so like seriously, guys, this refocuses your mind. You might not think about it, but it really does refocus your mind because you're all worried and stuff. Well, then you got to focus on, you know, squeezing the ball. That's what you got to focus on, squeezing this brain. And so you do that and your mind shuts down from all the worry and everything else you're thinking about. All right. And so I'm very excited. Now, I need you guys to do me a huge favor. Okay. So important. If you can set your calendar and your alarm, anybody who has this book in their hands, I need you on Tuesday to go to Amazon and review it. It doesn't matter if you haven't read it all. You didn't have to buy it on Amazon, okay? It's all you got to do is go over there, give it a five-star review, write a sentence, write a paragraph, write a page. Guys, I need you. Even if it's in the mail, guys, as long as on January 24, Tuesday, you write a review, what will that do? It will make the visibility of Amazon with this book. If all of you guys go over there and review it, go off the charts. Why do we need that? Because people need to be delivered from mind battles because the people that are attacking you in the mind is because they have mind battles. And we need even the secular world to try and get this book to see that a lot of their problems is demonic. So guys, please don't forget Tuesday you know, set your alarm 8 a.m. in the morning, go to Amazon, review that. If you really want, you can go and post the same review on Goodreads, Barnes and Nobles, everywhere, but it's really going to help me. So I ask you to do that. And um, I'm going to be having free giveaways all day Tuesday. Okay. And so make sure, but we're going to be talking about something that's not really in the book tonight, because I don't always like to teach about what's in the book because you can read the book. So I want to talk to you about some scriptures and I'm actually going to make these up and put them on a postcard and I'm going to start including them in your orders for free. I don't have them yet. Okay. But I'm going to start including them because I really think we need to keep these scriptures in front of us. I think we need to keep positive declarations in front of us. But first of all, and I'm not going to repeat these addresses. So if someone wants to type them in the comments, you can, you don't have to, but you can always go back and listen to the video if you didn't catch her, all the addresses. But in 1 Corinthians 2.16, it says, we have the mind of Christ. Now, I think there's so much truth in that. And I think we really need to pull on that. And what I declare out is I have the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ. I kind of take, I have this little sledgehammer here, okay? And it's just like, I have the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ. And so when I'm getting attacked by the devil, okay, when my mind's going in rumination, which is looping in negative thoughts, I'd be like, no, I have the mind of Christ. And what sort am I doing? It says, smash down negative thoughts. I'm, you know, smashing down that negative thought. Okay. Bless the Lord. Becky said, finding your teaching only two weeks ago, and I feel like you're saving my life. Hope you ha um, have, you had a lifetime of fear. I didn't recognize like you, and I was an inner healing ministry. Ready to write that review. Praise God, Becky. I just release you from fear in the name of Jesus Christ. And I just speak and decree that God will take you further into his glory and that you will keep receiving your freedom. Um, Becky, if you're not listening to my podcast, I do it on mind battles right now. And so that's a great way to get some more um, freedom. And also, if you want to um, come into my inner circle, we're doing a lot of things um, during the week that, you know, help people with freedom too. So um, I love that. Um, Kaye says, love your props. Aren't they fun? Props are fun, guys. Um, you know, we got the shofar, we got the shield, we got the sword. Sometimes I even take them off the wall. Okay. So just, you know, believe you have the mind of Christ. Why can we say that? Because the word of God says it, but also why can we say that is because we're made in our father's image. We're made in the image of God. 
And so when the devil's trying to torment you, you got to be like, I'm made in the father's image. I'm made in the likeness of God. Okay. Whoo, Jesus. Wow. I just felt chills go down my spine as I said that. I love it. Okay. So just declare out, I have the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ. All right. And, and believe you're made in his image. So that means what? Fear can't live in you. Anxiety can't live in you. Okay. Now we know it did, but now when we know our identity and our inheritance and that we have the mind of Christ, I'm just going to put on that mind of Christ. Okay. Think about your little brain. Okay. You can actually get these on the website guys. So, you know, think about this. Okay. This brain, we're going to call it the mind. I have the mind of Christ. And so I speak and I declare, declare right now a mind transformation for all of you. In the name of Jesus, I say that you do not conform to the patterns of this world, but you're transformed by the renewing of your minds. I speak a decree that you have the mind of Christ, that you think right thoughts, that anxiety and fear is gone, that depression and worry is gone, that rejection is gone, that unworthiness is gone. I speak a decree. I call it forth, guys. I call forth the full manifestation of it, that you have the mind like Christ thinks, you know, self-discipline, self-controlled and positive, full of joy and hope and love. Yes. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. All right. In 2 Timothy 4.18, it says, the Lord will rescue me from every evil attack. I think this is something really good to declare out, especially when you are afraid of um, financial attacks, what's happening in the world. If you're afraid of COVID, if you're afraid of sickness and disease, if you're afraid of wars, if you're afraid of a car accident, if you're you know, afraid, some people are afraid all the time that their house is going to get set on fire, whatever people's fears are. Okay. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack. Now make that personal. Okay. The Lord will rescue me, me. The Lord's going to rescue me. Why? Because he loves me because he loves you. The Lord's going to rescue me from every evil attack. He's going to rescue me. Why? Because it says he will. It doesn't say he may or he might. It says he will, the Lord will rescue me. So make it your own. Okay. We have to confess it to possess it. Come on. Someone put that in the comments. I'm going to possess it by my confession. I'm going to confess it. So I possess it. See, we need to be speaking out these scriptures. Why? Because the word of God says faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And I believe we need to encourage ourselves. I, I really, oh my goodness, I really do. Like guys, I'm going to make these postcards with these declarations of scriptures. And I'm, I'm ordering like 3000 of them because I just want to sew them. I'm going to, I'm not even going to sell them. I'm just going to sew them for free into people's lives because I believe we just need, I don't have a card here, but I believe we need something in front of us. You know, this says, pull your mind and thoughts back towards good and God, reel that thought back in and don't allow vain imaginations and false scenarios to manifest. Man, I needed that reminder. How many times do you just like imagine something in your mind all over again. Okay. These are my mind battle cards, guys. You can, you can get these. Who's gotten one of these in their order? Put it up in the comments. Who's gotten one of these in their order recently? Did you notice that we're putting one of these in the order or some of you are buying the whole pack? So you have the whole pack, but, um, I tell you, these are good battle reminders, but that's what I want you to do is I want you to have the positive scriptures too. Deb said she got one in her order. Who else got one in their order? They're so much fun. If you guys don't need them, then you know what? You need to like give them away. That's what you need to do. I'm using these like as a business card, you know, just here, have this little encouragement and stuff like that. You know, I think they're really, really cool. I love them. Okay. Now, it says in Colossians 3, 
to focus your minds on the things above. So one of the things that the Holy Spirit really um, taught me when I was getting mind binding spirits and vain imaginations, he's like, look up and over to the left. And I don't know why to the left, but I think he was just trying to draw my attention above, you know, above the situation, above the problem. He was trying to give me what I call, are you ready? A focal point. Now think about this, a focal point. So the woman that um, had the issue of blood, she said, if I only touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made well. That was her focal point. You know, she was like, I just need to touch that hem of the garment. That was her focal point. Now, for some of you, oil is your focal point. Think about it this way. Um, when you go up to an altar to get prayer, okay, you're like, okay, I'm going to come into agreement once that oil hits my head, you know, once that oil hits my head or once that pastor or apostle lays hands on me, that's kind of like your focal point. I also call it a point of contact, but the Holy Spirit was like, Kathy, just focus here. You know why? Honestly, guys, it's like this ball, the screen, the squeeze brain. Think about it. You're going in vain imaginations. You're going in false scenarios. You're being locked down by the demons. Okay. Now, okay. Your mind is like running rampant. Okay. But now I'm squeezing this brain ball. Okay. This stress ball. And it's a brain. So I'm squeezing that. Okay. That takes effort. That takes to think, okay, let me squeeze it. Let me squeeze it. What are you doing? You're refocusing. Okay. You're refocusing your mind. You're trying to pull it away. And that's what we have to do is we got to focus our mind on something else. And that's what the Holy Spirit was like, draw up, you know, just draw up. He was just giving me an exercise to focus on something else. And so in Colossians 3, 2, it says, focus your minds on the things above. So think about like your heavenly inheritance, that, that heavenly kingdom. Where can you put your mind so that it's not in torment? That's what I want you to think about. And in Isaiah 26, 3, okay, it says, you will keep in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. You will keep in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Okay. And so the, the Holy Spirit was like drawing me up, stay on me, focus on me. Don't focus on this torment, stay on me. And so if we keep our mind focused on the Lord, then what? That, that torment, that anxiety, that, that fear, that rejection, whatever your mind battle is, it's not going to prosper because our mind is focused on the Lord. Our mind is focused on that place of peace. You know, even for me, guys, I've, I've been delivered of those mind battles, but he told me, he said this year, he said, your scripture is, I'm going to give you the peace that surpasses all understanding. And I'm like, man, I'll take some more peace. I'll take peace when, you know, I'm trying to get a book contract signed and a TV show going and a podcast, you know, um, improved on and, you know, working in my office every day. I'll take that piece when I'm, you know, trying to book airline tickets and, you know, different things like that. I'll take that piece. And so he'll keep in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. But guys, we got to draw our mind away from that torment. We got to draw our mind away from that vain imagination or that negativity or that demonic spirit that's luring. Okay. We got to, we got to pull, we got to reel it in. Remember I said, I need to get you all some small fishing poles. We got to reel that thought in. Okay. Reel that thought in. That's what I want you to do is I really want you to reel that thought in. Okay. And so we got to do that. All right. And in James four, seven, it says, Take a stand against the adversary and he will flee from you. And friends, I believe that's why we don't get delivered from mind battles because we don't take the stand. You know, we don't go in here. We read. We maybe get tormented. <coughs> 
But then we're like, hmm. We have to decree and we have to declare, okay? We have to command every lying, depressive, stressful, worrisome, anxiety, fear, mind-binding, torment, unforgiveness, offense, all of those demons to leave. We have to war audibly, okay? I break every agreement with control, rebellion, fear, stress, and anxiety, and worry, and I command all control to leave me. When I am weary, I will trust in the Lord. When I am fearful and I need a protector, I will know he will be my provider. God loves me, and he is a shield and a fortress around me. I will draw strength from the Lord that only he can provide. I choose this day to release fear and control in Jesus' name. Okay. We got to stand. We got to, we got to fight. Okay. We got to stand and we got to get violent here. Okay. And I think this is a lot of times we don't stand, we get weary, but every day we got to be reading these declarations to break agreement with the enemy. I bind and rebuke a spirit of fear from activating my life. I proclaim, I yield to the Holy spirit. I command that my emotions are pliable and malleable, that I am not stubborn and unchangeable. I trust my heavenly father to be my protector, the one who orchestrates my steps and leads and guides me in my way. I remove wrong mindsets and soul ties to my parents that have bound me with the spirit of fear, control, anxiety, and depression in Jesus' name. I bind and cast out every tormenting evil spirit in the name of Jesus. I rebuke and cut off every defiling spirit that would attack my thought life in Jesus' name. I destroy and break up anything I have done in the natural to cause those attacks in the spiritual. I command and decree every mind binding spirit to release its hold on me and get out in Jesus name. I annihilate with the fire of God, every principality and evil power assigned to attack my mind and command them to leave me in Jesus name. Come on guys. Okay. There's three of you commenting right now on all those declarations and that's living proof that you're not standing. You're not fighting and you're not warfaring because if you were, you would be typing in the chats and you would be in agreement. Guys, we can't be passive in the war that's raging in our mind. We have to stand. We have to pray. We can't just read five of these guys. I have, this book has them in every single chapter. Okay. We need to go get our little highlighter or sticky notes and we need to tab every place they are and we need to be like warring and decreeing and casting down because you're going to get deliverance when what when you are violent the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force we must stand we must stand See, it says in Isaiah 54, 17, that no weapon formed against you will prosper, but you have to be decreeing and declaring so that weapon doesn't prosper. Okay, come on, come on. In Psalm 34, 4, it says, I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears delivered me. Okay. I sought the Lord. It doesn't say he automatically delivered. It says, I sought the Lord guys. We're, we're getting, we're getting weak. We're giving up too easy. We have like this, this victim mentality guys, this, this stagnancy. We want deliverance. We got to, to war. We got to fight for it. In Psalm 56, three, it says, when I'm afraid, I put my trust in you. I put my trust in you. I think a lot of you need to declare that out of your mind, out of your mouth. Okay. I put my trust in you. I put my trust in you, Lord. When fear comes upon me, I put my trust in you. You know, I have this trust God sign above my uh, bay window and it's like engraved and card carved out 
And I bought the word trust. And then like a year later, I found God to match it. I'll look at that thing every day, every day. And even like the last two or three weeks, probably three weeks, I've been in my first fruits fast of the first year. I just look at that and I just declare, I trust you, God. I trust you, God. I, I've been just like declaring it out. I trust you, God. I trust you, God. And so make that a simple de declaration every day. I trust you, God. Write it in your book, okay? So like when you're looking at these declarations, I love this. You know what somebody did one time with one of my other books? They took one of my books and they improved on all my declarations and sent it to me. They made it personal. They put their name in it. They added to it. Um, they added scripture to it. It was fabulous, guys. Um, they nailed it and it was beautiful. So take, you know, on every chapter we have a declaration. So this one is, I bind and cast out every tormenting evil spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. So maybe you want to say, I bind and cast out every evil tormenting spirit out of Kathy, out of Re, out of Rachel, out of Judy, out of Rhonda, out of Becky, whatever your name is, in the name of Jesus Christ. Now you could add, see, there's even space. So you could add right after the sentence, I command the torment from trauma to leave me in Jesus name. So you could extend. Okay, that sentence and look at like on this page. So the declarations are here and you got all this empty paper. So what could you do? You could just sit here and write and write and write your own declaration and make this your declaration journal. Amen. I, I love that. I love that idea. Whew. Romans 8, 28. I've been um, quoting this out for a couple years. All things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Are you called according to his purpose? Yes. So all things are working together for your good. And I think that's an important scripture to keep in front of us. And so I want to go into some positive scriptures that you could declare out. In Psalm 3, 3, it says, you, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory and the one who lifts up my head. We don't have to be down in, in fear and anxiety and depression and heaviness and worry and defeat and victim. You, O Lord, are a shield for me, the glory and the one who lifts up my head. That's what we need to declare out. In Psalm 4, 7, you have put gladness in my heart. You know, my husband and I have been praying that we will have um, such joy and gladness, even when we're doing paperwork or uh, pushing a vacuum around the house or, you know, doing stuff that's not really fun. We're like, let's, let's have joy and, and gladness in it. But guys, I think we got to convince ourselves, you know, we got to, what I call fake it till we make it. Keep speaking these scriptures out until they become us. Does that make sense to you? In Psalm 16, 8, it says, I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I will not be moved. Now that goes into alignment of standing, guys. It's saying I will not be moved. So let's not let anything shake us and let's not be moved when that temptation comes or that defeat wants to attack us or that mind binding spirit wants to pierce us. Let's say, I will not be moved. Psalm 16, 11 says, you will show me the path of life in your presence is fullness of joy. I tell you, the happiest years of my life is when I would soak and just be in his presence when I worshiped and soaked. Um, you know, when we're in his presence, we're untouchable. We're unmovable. We're unshakable. When we're in his presence, what do we do? We stand. Guys, come on. Who needs this? This is good stuff. Come on. I need some comments. Let me know. Like, yes, Kathy, I'm just busy writing all the scriptures because this is so good. All right. Yes. Come on. 
In Psalm 18, too, it says, the Lord is my pillar and my fortress. This is, I'm reading this out of the Jewish translation because I liked how this um, read, you know, you've heard it. The Lord is my rock, but I liked this. The Lord is my pillar because what does pillar represent? Standing. Come on. A pillar stands and my fortress and my deliverer, my God and my strength in whom I will trust. Okay. So that's again, what we're doing. We're, we're declaring out that trust. We're declaring out that trust. Bless the Lord. In Psalm 18, three, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Now I want you to look at this again. You got to call upon the Lord, not call your friend. So when we're in that mind battle, when we're in that vain imagination, when we're in that rumination, when we're in that negativity, when we're in that place of cycling, we have to call upon the Lord. Your friend can't save you. They're going to talk to you. You might be a foe better for the moment because you got it off your chest, but the Lord can give you spiritual tools to equip you and help you. So we have to call upon the Lord. Again, that call is an action. Also, when you, when you look at the word call, guys, call is audible. It means to cry out loud in an audible voice. And so we're not just calling out, you know, sitting back in our chair, praying, connecting spirit to spirit with the Lord. No, God, I need your help. God, I'm in this mind battle. Okay. Even my daughter, you know, she was texting me the other day and she was struggling with a mind battle. And I said, you're the only one that can win your battle. You're the only one that can win your battle. Okay. And so that's what you got to think about. A deliverance minister can't win your battle. An apostle or pastor can't win your battle. Only you can win your battle. So you have to take that responsibility and you have to call upon the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. In Psalm 32, 7, you are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall surround me with songs of deliverance. Yes. Who has the, the deliverance blanket that we um, are selling? We're going to be getting a new supply in this week. But I love it because we put this um, on the blanket and someone texts me and they're like, once I wrap that blanket around me, I instantly started getting deliverance because why? Cause we have this scripture that you surround me with songs of deliverance. Okay. And so, uh, re says she has one bless the Lord. Okay. Re give us a testimony, like tell everyone about this blanket and how awesome it is. Um, so he surrounds us with songs of deliverance guys. And, you know, you got to look too at the book of Psalms, the book of Psalms are songs. Okay. Songs of deliverance. And, and I love of uh, Tana said she has one of the deliverance blankets. Um, and so, uh, and she loves that. I love mine. Um, I actually just gave mine away. Cause I, I felt like someone needed it. And so I gave mine away. So I'll get a new one when the shipment comes in. Like literally they should have been in Wednesday. So they're coming in every single day. Sarah said, I love mine. Deborah, they're on the website. I would go and order one now guys. Um, they have fire, they have, um, and fire angel wings. They have all these, um, scriptures of deliverance guys, but I tell you, I would go and order it because once they come in, I'm sure we're going to sell out again. And these ones took like five weeks to get because they're custom made right here in the USA. Come on, give a shout out that we're having a product right here in the USA. I love that. In Psalm 40, 17, it says, you are my help and my deliverer. Okay. He is your help and your deliverer. He. So we have to declare that out. God, you are my help and my deliverer. Jesus, you are my help and you are my deliverer. Jesus, you are my help and you are my deliverer. 
In Psalm 55, 18, it says, he has redeemed my soul in peace from the battle that was against me. Come on, guys. We all feel like the battle is against us, but he can redeem our soul in peace. These are scriptures that we need to keep in front of us. That's why I love that deliverance blanket. You can just wrap yourself up in it and you can read the scriptures around it. Okay. And that's what we got to say. All right. In Psalm 56, 4, it says, in God, I will praise his word. In God, I will put my trust. I will not fear. Come on, come on. That's what we need to be saying. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I will put my trust. I will not fear. I will not fear. I will not fear. Come on, declare it out right now. I will not fear. 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 All right. And fear can represent that stress and anxiety, that worry, whatever you are struggling with. I will not fear. I will not fear. Come on. I will not fear. I will not fear. I will not fear. And I love this um, Psalm here. 71, 16. I will go in the strength of the Lord. Oh, come on. Who needed that? We don't have to stand in our own strength. We stand in the strength of the Lord. We have the Holy Spirit who's what? Our helper, our, our comforter, our, our guide, our friend. I will go in the strength of the Lord. And so, oh, Jesus. Whew, yes. I will call upon the Lord who's worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. In God, I will praise his word. I have put my trust in him. I will not fear. I will go in the strength of the Lord. Oh, come on, come on. This is all over, okay? No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I will take a stand against the adversary and he will flee from me. I will trample on serpents and scorpions and over all powers of the enemy and nothing by any means shall hurt me. He will keep me in perfect peace when my eyes are stayed on him. When my mind is stayed on him, I will call upon the Lord and I am saved from my enemies. Whoo! Though an army should encamp against me, my heart will not fear. Wow. Mm, I'm feeling really good now, guys. Whoo! Jesus, who needed that? Like, come on. So now imagine that on a postcard and you walking around your house or your office, you, you know, walking in a prayer meeting, declaring all those out, releasing all those positive confessions. I call them positive proclamations and they're going to fall back upon you and it's going to release peace in your life. And that torment is going to flee. Whoo. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. Come on. Give God some praise. Mm, I'm feeling good now. Whew, I needed that. We all need it. We don't know it even. We don't even know it and we need it. All right. So, so let me give you some more tips. Okay. You guys need some more tips, right? You're hungry for more, right? These are some of my best um, tips that I can give you guys. And these are ways that I conquered um, fear. And this is why I just, I love to um, have these guys. Torment cannot exist if you resist. The battle is in your mind, but it is your mind. You are the only one that can lead yourself to freedom. Obedience and discipline are key to win the battle. Pray this out loud right now with me, okay? I declare that every unproductive and unfruitful thought is leaving now. I break agreement with fear, anxiety, worry, and depression. I proclaim, I think positively and with clarity and that I am set free from mind battles in Jesus name. Come on. That alone is deliverance. Pull your mind and thoughts back towards good in God. Reel that thought back in. Don't allow vain imaginations and false scenarios to manifest. Take authority over your mind, cast out a mind binding spirit. That is why people don't get free from fear, anxiety, worry, depression, because they're not casting out a mind binding spirit. Speak audibly and declare I mind binding spirit. I command you to get out in Jesus name. 
Capture the thought, evict the thought. Is the fight, the battle is real. Don't give it up. Each time you dismiss the thought instead of entertaining it, you're one step closer to victory. Come on, that's a good word. Pray through the torment. Don't give it into it. Pray until the symptoms and emotions subside. You are a conqueror. Romans 8, 37. Perseverance is moving forward despite opposition. The battle for your freedom may be fierce, but you are worth it. Therefore, if the sun sets you free, you shall be free indeed. John 8, 36. You have to arise, pray, and worship through the torment. You have to fight even when your mind is being plagued. The key to breakthrough is consistency. It's not a feeling, it's faith. Defeat is not an option. Do not quit. Never give up. Refuse to believe anything except complete and total freedom from mind battles. Be obedient. Be disciplined. Press through to your breakthrough. You have the greatest team of three on your side. Father God, Jesus, his son, and the Holy Spirit. Don't rent space in your mind to the enemy. Tell the devil to shut up and then focus on replacing the lie you are hearing with a new positive thought. Guys, these are like my best battle tips of, I wish someone had this coaching for me that I could have, you know, Hey, I'm, I'm suffering this. Hey, I'm suffering. Hey, I need a, I need a good cheerleader. Pick me up. You guys can grab those on my website while you're getting your mind battles book. Oh, come on. I feel so edified right now, guys, releasing those positive declarations. Um, does anyone have a favorite positive declaration or a positive scripture you want to put up in the chat? Um, I just want to encourage you. Um, whew, yeah, I'm feeling good, good, good. Think about when we're releasing all that positivity and all those proclamations, the word of God how it's just going to come back upon us and it's going to change our thinking. And that's what the Lord told me years ago. He said, Kathy, he said, if your mind is so full of scripture, there'll be no room for fear. And guys, I want to be honest with you. I didn't fill my mind up with scripture. I didn't really get in the word like I should have. I didn't like permeate it. I mean, he gave me a warning and, and I didn't, I didn't soak it all in. And I tell you, I'm just on a mission to release positive uh, scriptures and affirmations um, in your life. Pam says, she, um, I, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yep. Philippians 4, 4 13, for those of you guys that don't know. Um, for God has not given me a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. That's a great one, Karen. I quote that every single day. And that's 2 Timothy 1, 7, for those of you that don't know. Um, but I love that, guys. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Uh, Michelle said, I felt that. Um, uh, Ree said, Lord, you said you'd never leave me or forsake me. Oh, that is, that is really good. That is really good. Come on. Who else has some, even if you don't know the address, um, David said Psalm 91. So good. I, I can't even pick out one part of Psalm 91. I love the end of Psalm 91 because it says, because you have set your love upon me, I will deliver you. Okay. And it's also about, because you know, my name and know my name means the authority of my name. Um, but I love that, you know, Psalm 91 says when we abide in the secret place, you know, we'll hide under the shadow of the almighty. Um, Pam says we are more than conquerors. Yes, we are more than conquerors for those in Christ Jesus. And we are in Christ Jesus. Nothing's impossible with God. That's another great one. I, I love that, Pam. Nothing is impossible. Uh, Kadesha says Psalm 23. Um, I'm reading a really good book right now. It's on Psalm 23. And I love what this guy said. He said, you know, when we look at Psalm 23, it says, you'll prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And he says, don't give the enemy a seat at your table. Come on, don't give the enemy a seat at your table. So guys, when the enemy's trying to torment you in your mind, don't give the enemy a seat at your table. Um, Pam says, thanks be to God who causes us to triumph. Oh, I forgot about that one, Pam. That's great. 
Uh, great one. I, I love that. Thanks be to God who causes us to triumph. Think about that. I got to write that down a minute. Can I, can I borrow that one, Pam? Is that okay? I might have to put that on these cards that I'm making. Um, thanks be to God who caused us to triumph. That's a good one. Hallelujah. See, that's why I love it when you guys comment, you know, you never know what I'm going to pick up here. Bless the Lord. But that's true. We need to re be reminded that he causes us to triumph. Okay, I got that. Nothing is too difficult. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Yeah, Tana, it was really good. It was It was kind of, um, I want to say, life-changing in a way for my daughter and I, because now we're just like, Hey, don't give the enemy a seat at your table. So like, it's an accountability check guys. And so if someone is like, Hey, you know, something's going on or fear's trying to manifest or the enemy's trying to hit us. We're, we're like, don't give the enemy a seat at your table. Don't give it. Cause why? Cause Psalm 23 says what, you know, read Psalm 23. Psalm 23 is so good. Don't look at Psalm 23 as the scripture that people read for the dead you know, at the funerals all the time. Uh, there's so much life in Psalm 23. Come on. I love it. Um, thank you, Pam. I'm glad I can borrow that scripture. Hallelujah. Um, Shedreen says, if God is for me, who can be against me? Yes. And Pam says, perfect love casts out fear. Pam, you know a lot about fear. Have you been plagued with fear? Uh, you know, a lot of scriptures about that to combat that praise God that, you know, those, um, great, great scriptures to help you um, be a conqueror and victorious guys. Bless the Lord. This is fun. I love the interaction. God is so good. He is so amazing. The word never returns void. That is so, so true. So guys, I want to encourage you head over to my website and I'll be signing these and putting them in the mail tomorrow. Uh, and don't forget Amazon Tuesday go and review. If you joined us late, if you already have this book, if you, if it's in the mail, even if you haven't read it, just read one page, say it's great. Go to Amazon, give it a five star review on Tuesday. It will help Amazon like sponsor it, send it out to people. Uh, my publisher told me a couple months ago, they said the reviews that you get the first week, if you can really like blast out a ton of reviews on Amazon, it makes all the difference in book sales. Um, Denise says, greater is he that's in me than he who's in the world. Guys, a, a popular, popular scripture that we need to be reminded of all the time. And Rachel said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And, and that's what we've been praying for is just more joy in, in our life. Um, bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Judy said, he makes my feet like hinds feet and makes me walk on high places. And Psalm 44, four, you are my King, my God, who decrees victories for Jacob through you. We push back our enemies through you. We trample on our foes. Wow. That's another great one. I love that one, Becky. Thank you. Wow. Yes, I love that. All right, guys, let's take communion. If you are new to my church, we always take communion together. Inner circle. We are going to start taking communion on Tuesdays together. So bring communion to your electronic device also. So um, God, guys, let's uh, take communion together. Even if you don't have communion, stay. We're having fun. All right. So this purchased your mind battle. Think about it that way. This purchased my mind battle. So I can be free because the word of God says, who in the sun sets free is free indeed. So right now, as I take this, I decree and I declare my freedom. I thank you, Jesus, that you purchased anxiety and fear and stress and worry. I thank you that I don't have to live with it because you broke your body for me so that I can be blessed in my coming, blessed in my going, so I can have a sound, self-disciplined mind. I can be um, joyful and happy and full of hope for my complete deliverance because of what you did. So guys, go ahead and take your communion. All right. Now, when you look at your juice, your wine, whatever you have, water, I don't care if you take it with water, guys, go get some water. 
okay? If you don't have it with you. But one drop, purchase this, okay? One drop, purchase your healing, your deliverance, whatever you need from Jesus. He loves you that much. One drop, okay? And guys, we should be so joyful for what Jesus did. And we should walk out in positive attitudes and affirmations because he purchased it all. And so as you take this, think about how blessed we are that Jesus gave it all for us. Whew, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Come on. Give God a shout out. Give God some praise. Bless the name of the Lord. I want to keep praying for you. I just want to release positive words into you. I want to release a positive attitude. I just pray that your heart would be full of joy, that your heart would be full of hope, that your heart would be full of peace. And that as your heart is so full of the abundant love of the Father, that that it would transfer into your mind, into your thought life. Whoo, yes. That it would renew and transform your life. That it would renew and transform your life. Come on, guys. I speak in decree for a mind transformation right now for the Holy Spirit to come upon you. And I just command for the neuroplasticity in your brain to change right now to positivity, to good thoughts. Guys, you know, every morning you break up, you wake up, you have 8,000 new neurons in your brain. Our brain is ever changing. And his word says, his mercies are new every morning. Now, scripture says, his mercies are new every morning. Science says, in the natural, we have 8,000 new neurons in our mind every morning. Come on, I'm getting ready to deliver a word. Our brain is called neuroplasticity. It means our brain is ever changing. So if we have 8,000 new neurons when we wake up, our brain is neuroplasticity and is ever changing. And the word of God says his mercies are new every morning. Every day is a fresh chance of deliverance. Every day is a fresh awakening to get rid of the torment and the vain imaginations. Every day is a new chance to break free from mind-binding spirits. Now, can I tell you the secret? What are you putting in your brain, in your mind, in the first hour you wake up? Because if you have 8,000 new neurons and your brain is changing every day, and especially in the morning, when you're running to your phone, that's what you're programming your brain to want to change into is the dependency on your phone. Come on, who heard that? His mercies are new ever morning. What is the first thing that we are putting in as those neurons have just deposited in us overnight? As our brain is changing, evolving, what is the first thing? So if you want to get out of addiction, you have to set that aside. This put by your nightstand. The word of God. I don't have my Bible right here. It's upstairs. Okay. The word of God put by your nightstand. And you have to draw your mind away. It's, it's that lure, friends, and that's pull. Oh, but I got to check who needed me overnight. I got to check. Okay, no, you don't. 
What's more important, the throne or the phone? What's more important, Jesus changing your mind or answering that email at 6 a.m. when most people's offices don't even uh, open till 8 or 9? You know, we want to sit there and reply to the emails. I'm not going to reply to a text at 6 a.m. I have my I have my text shut off from 10 to 7. So from 10 to 7, I don't even hear my texts because I don't want to hear them in my prayer time. And so think about that. I think I really think this is a, a life-changing thing. If we have 8,000 new neurons every morning and our brain, you know, is made to change. And the Bible says his mercies are new every morning. Why aren't we co-laboring with it? Why are we resisting it? Why are we fighting it? Why are we programming it to be something else? Okay. Think about that. Think about it and have it be life to you. Have it be life. Amen. Guys, right now we're going to give our tithes and offerings. For those of you that are new to our church, we give what we call relational offerings. So we're giving it to God out of our relationship with him. So my team will put those offering links up. If you are on YouTube or Facebook, you can give at cash app dollar sign K DeGraw Ministries. You can give at Kathy DeGraw Ministries dot org or you can paypal.me backslash K DeGraw Ministries. I want to encourage you to sow a seed into what we're doing, guys. We are releasing an audio declarative CD. Um, to release you free from mind battles. We're launching a TV program. We are um, improving our podcast. We're making our podcast go on YouTube. We are empowering you through webinars. We are going to be doing a conference September 8 and 9. I want you to mark your calendars now. I want you to start saving your money now. I want you to start putting in for vacation time now. September 8 and 9, we are doing a conference in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and we are going to be doing a prophetic deliverance conference, a prophetic deliverance conference. And so I want to encourage you to write it down, save your money. We'll be setting out all the information. Make sure you're on my email list, okay? And we are going to be doing, I'm going to call it like crazy wild deliverance. Like seriously, we are going to be getting demons out. We are going to be prophesying over people. We are going to be releasing the ministry of deliverance prophetically as led by the Holy Spirit. And so I want to encourage you to get there to definitely get there September 8 and 9 in Grand Rapids, Michigan. It's going to be awesome. Awesome. So please give an offering, help us to do what God is calling us to do. So into good ground, bless the Lord. I'll be on Facebook and YouTube every day this week. On Tuesday, we're going to have a lot of special promos, a lot of giveaways. No, I'm not giving my book away, but I'll be giving other things away. We're going to be celebrating. And so I want to encourage you to celebrate with us why we release Mind Battles. Guys, get this for a Bible study. This has things that you could work through with an accountability partner, with a pastor or counselor. And so grab as many of these as you can and help people get free. Share it to your Facebook page. Share it, share it, share it. And please go to Amazon and review it. I, I, I'd be so honored, guys. If I've touched your life in any way, please go over to Amazon and review it on Tuesday. Set your phone alarm. And then send me a, uh, a message, guys. If you have my text, send me a text with the review. Um, if you review it, 
send me the link, send me a copy of it and, and let me see what you're doing and how you're helping me. Guys, remember to share these to your walls. If you got it, send me a picture of you with the book to my email, uh, to my Facebook wall, tag me in it or something, uh, tag me in my Instagram so that I can, you know, brag on how you're reading it and give you some love, um, for sharing it and different things. So guys, I hope you enjoyed tonight. I love you. Thank you so very much for the scriptures you guys put up and how you participated with me. You are awesome. You are amazing. And guys, we're going to go on this journey of getting delivered from mind battles. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, my podcast is dropping a new episode. Make sure you're getting it because I want you to get free and stay free. Good night and have a great night.